Tuesday. Thank you kindly for bearing with us through our technical difficulties. The network in full format now. An active shooter ends with said shooter put down by local police. Which jurisdiction, which police department, we don't know yet, but we can confirm local police have neutralized the shooter. Yes, that means shooting back themselves. The active shooter now likely at UVA Medical Center. He is reported by the Twitter account of the Charlottesville Police Department to be in critical condition. The location for this active shootout, Emmett Street, Red Roof Inn, local schools on absolute lockdown, the neighborhood absolutely scared, and the community asking questions. 17 hours ago, not even 17 hours ago, there was a town hall meeting um, in the city of Charlottesville next to Dairy Market at a historically African-American church. 17 hours ago, community leaders, stakeholders, elected officials, heads of nonprofits, and folks that live in the 10th and Page neighborhood and in other neighborhoods in the city of Charlottesville asked Michael Kotchis some very difficult questions. Today, Michael Kotchis is on the, sh on the scene of what could be his highest profile gun violent incident yet. Yes, we know the shooter is in critical condition at the hospital UVA. We do not know yet if the active shooter was killed I am looking outside our studio on Market Street in downtown Charlottesville, and I am seeing police officers driving back to headquarters. In the words of Dave Matthews, ants marching back to headquarters here on Market Street for the Charlottesville Police Department. A scary scene for this community. This community, Charlottesville City, is averaging one report of gun violence a live shooting, an active shooting in the city each day in 2023. I want to report, repeat that statistic, which I heard last night at the town hall meeting. So far this year and 2023, the city of Charlottesville has had one report of, an, of a shooting of some capacity in its jurisdiction since 2023 in the first of the year. That is fairly significant. Judah Wickhauer has done a fantastic job of getting the network back on in full format. I want to highlight his efforts. I'd like to go to a two-shot uh, with you, Judah, to get some reaction. We'll see if we can get some reaction from Alex Erpe. He may have gotten stuck in transport as many of the roads around Charlottesville itself were closed or had police detouring traffic. We had considerable, considerable schools in the area on lockdown private and public, preschools. We had a number of buildings, including the, the Dominion Building and the Region 10 Building on lockdown, the Red Roof Inn on lockdown. The lockdown extended as far as shops in the Barracks Road Shopping Center. Judah Wickhauer on a two-shot. You've done a good job getting us back on screen. I appreciate your efforts. You've done a good job of putting the Google map on screen of where the active shooter took place. It, it initially started as um, an active shooter on the lamb, on the run. We don't know if this was a man or a woman. Police responded very quickly, cornering the active shooter in the Red Roof Inn corridor. Our studio is on Market Street on the corner of Market and 4th literally less than a block away from the police station, Charlottesville City. You and I watched outside the window as easily three dozen marked and unmarked police cars went buzzing down Market Street at speeds eclipsing 40, 50 miles per hour. Initial reaction on this active shooter, less than 17 hours removed from a town hall meeting at a historically African-American church in the 10th and Page neighborhood, a meeting hosted by Michael Kotchis, the newly minted police chief. I uh, don't even know what to think. Uh, I mean, it's just... <clears throat> of, all the, of all the things that we've, that we've seen going on recently, this is, you know, this is just... Uh, I think this is the highest profile, and I understand that there's been murders. Yeah. And I'm not trying to compare and contrast murders to an active shooter who was put down, neutralized, in the words of an admiral sheriff 
Okay? Certainly the murder of Skeeta Smith, a Charlottesville High School basketball standout, a father, a fiance. Yeah. His murder certainly of high profile. Okay? I'm minimi- not minimi- minimi- minimizing any of the violence. Right. But we have a standoff, we have a police negotiation, we have a, a shooter on the lam, and then we have a police force, we're not sure which one, neutralizing the shooter to the point of critical condition at UVA Medical Center now, Judah. I don't think Alex even knows what's going on. I just got a text from him. He's stuck in traffic? Uh, running late. Accident or something on 250 has the whole road closed. Okay. Alex Erpe, it just shows you the significance of what's happening. He was going to join us on the show today. He's stuck on 250 in traffic. You may want to let him know that there was an active shooter scenario there. Now, you don't have to panic him because the local police have neutralized him. Yeah. And have him live stream into his SUV, the I Love Seville show, through his Bluetooth. Folks, what is going on in this community? I was having a conversation with the cashier at the Market Street Market grocery store right next to the I Love Seville network. There's the grocery store on the corner of Market and 4th, right across from basically the pie chest, right next to our studio, the I Love Seville studio. This, gro- this cashier, who Judah and I both know well, let me know as I was purchasing some food prior to this program that he was on the downtown mall this past Saturday evening. And while he was on the downtown mall this past Saturday evening with his partner, he witnessed at 10.30 p.m. on a Saturday night a car speeding down the downtown mall. I'm not talking the, st- the side street, Heather Higher Way or 4th Street. The cashier and Judah and I know him to be character and credible. Saw the vehicle at high speeds on the downtown mall itself, 10.30 p.m. on a Saturday evening. I've been in this community 23 years. I've never seen the downtown mall, the pedestrian portion of the mall, have a vehicle going 40 plus miles an hour on it. How dangerous is that? I mean, you're going to have to play Frogger with the posts, the bicycles, the pedestrians, the seating, the patio furniture, the flower plots and, and, and plants. How the hell do you do that? How do you go that fast down the downtown mall? I don't. I don't even know. I. I mean, there are. Yeah, you got. You got signs sticking out in the middle of the people patios, yeah. alfresco diners. I. It's insane. Seventeen hours ago, we're at a, a town hall meeting. Get at the B-roll footage of the town hall meeting and slide it to a point, if you could, where we can show the robustness of the crowd that was in attendance, <clears throat> if possible. Michael Payne announces yesterday his re-election bid. Michael Cautious hosts a town hall meeting, which I attended and spoke at. I will play that footage for you in a matter of minutes on today's program. They, the event organizers of the town hall meeting, the police department in conjunction with the Dairy Market staff. Remember, Dairy Market owns the historically African-American church next to the market. This church relocated the congregation to a different spot. After the congregation relocated from this church, Dairy Market purchased the church and transformed the church into a a wedding event venue in a community event venue. Last night, we saw the community event venue portion at its absolute capacity. The general manager of Dairy Market was quoted yesterday saying in front of all of us, we did not expect this many people to show up. There you see Lloyd Snook and Dave Norris on screen. You see Michael Cotchis on screen. You see multiple media outlets on screen. You see me interacting with the police chief there on screen. It looks like the footage is a little rumble there. Is that what you're seeing? Well, I'm going backwards and forwards. Oh, you're fa- so okay. I check. apologize. I didn't know that's what you were doing. Just I appreciate you showcasing it. it. It was, it was, it was, the expectation was less than 100 people. I would bet you there was 200 and change there. It was so crowded that people were spilling onto the street, onto Preston Avenue, and onto 10th. That's how crowded and how concerned this community was. 
The sad irony is 17 hours ago, we had a town hall on gun, gang, and drug violence. And 17 hours later, we have conscious arriving to a makeshift command center in the parking lot of Gold, Gold's Gym, having to navigate the collateral damage of an active shooter in an area of Charlottesville and Almaro County that has tens of thousands of people nearby. That literally all just happened. Gang violence is now transforming into violence that transpires in hotel parking lots in the 11 o'clock hour of a morning. I, I, Judah, I need to repeat what I just said. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Please, please just consider the significance of this. If we can go to a two shot here. Compartmentalized, compartmentalized gang, drug, and gun violence that historically in a 10.2 square mile city has been compartmentalized to a couple of areas or neighborhoods mm -hmm. has now become so commonplace and ubiquitous that the gun violence, I'm going to wait to include gang violence into this or drug violence. The extent of what I know now is gun violence. But we've gone from violence compartmentalized into certain pockets of our community to violence that is so commonplace and ubiquitous that an active shooter is negotiating with multiple police forces in the 11 o'clock hour of a Tuesday morning, points a, a, a gun, some kind of gun, at police, and they have to neutralize him by shooting at him in the 11 o'clock morning of a Tuesday. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I'm, we, we know very few details about this. For all we know, it could have been that, that this was part of an active investigation that they were looking into to uh, get to the bottom of where all the violence is coming from that we've been seeing. And they uh, got someone, and he ran, and they sent officers after him because they knew he was armed. Uh, we don't know. Or it could just be... I, I mean, we're we're basically... We're basically making guesses in the dark. I, I, I have not thrown any guesses out. All I've said is absolute fact. A, a shooter's been neutralized in the Red Roof Inn vicinity, area, and corridor by police. We're not sure which force did the shooting or the neutralizing of the active shooter. Yeah. We don't know motive. We don't know why this active shooter was on the run. We know it happened. It started in the 11 o'clock hour. We watch dozens of police cars speed by our studio. We know local schools in the area were put on lockdown, private and public. We know the Almaro County Sheriff's Office had team members there. The Almaro County Police Department had team members there. And the Charlottesville Police Department had team members there. We know Michael Cotches is at the scene currently navigating the collateral damage. We know Michael Cotches hosted a town hall meeting last night at 6 p.m. to talk about gun, drug and gang violence. We know that Charlottesville City is averaging one shots fired call per day in 2023. We now know in the Charlottesville area at least 22 people have been injured by gunfire in 2023. We know that this has become an issue, that the police department is rolling out police districts in the city. And I asked Michael Cotches about those police districts. Do you have the sound from last night's meeting in the town hall where I asked Michael Cotches these very questions? I asked Michael Cotches, did you ever expect this job to be this difficult? He answered that question. I asked Michael Cotches last night, to specifically identify the three policing districts. And I asked Michael Cotches last night why the UVA corner was considered or included in one of the three policing districts when Tim Longo and the University Police Department have their own police force. Do you have that sound ready to rock and roll? All right, play that audio. How long is this clip? Four minutes. Okay, it's a short clip. Watch this clip. It shows you stakeholders in the room, it shows you Michael Cotches answering straightforward questions, and it gives you a very good feel of what happened in a town hall meeting last night where over a couple hundred people showed up at a historically African-American church in the 10th and Page neighborhood. Play that sound if you could in three, in two, in one. 
I will keep this under 60 seconds. Um, first, thank you for the time to connect with the community. I was not, um, you were not my first pick. I wanted <laughs> Officer okay. Durrett in the okay. corner, but I think you have uh, undoubtedly risen to the occasion, and I'm grateful for your transparency, your communication, and how you're trying to connect with the community. Two-part question. First part is this. Did you anticipate this job being this difficult when you took it? And then the second part of the question is, you've identified three policing districts. Two of them are specific, 10th and Page, the UVA corner. How will you work with Tim Longo and the UVA police on the UVA corner? Mm -hmm. Because that seems like it's UVA's, UPD's juris jurisdiction. Then I guess the third part of the question is, what is the third district? Mm -hmm. How it's been identified by the media is a little further than 10th and Page. If I could get a geographical specific district for the third one. So to summarize, and then I'm done talking, <laughs> did you anticipate the job being this difficult? The second part of the question is, how will you work with Chief Longo in policing the UVA corner? And then the third part of the question is, what is the third district specifically by geography? That's right. it, Chief. Thank you. I'm going to try to remember these Thank three. You. But I, I, help. Help. I, I know you will. Yeah. I know you I will. Uh, the first question, did I expect it to be this difficult? So, uh, <laughs> um, as a chief, you want to work into a, in a community that cares about its community. You want a community that wants to be involved in solutions. Because I know, just like many of you said here tonight, we, we're not going to solve all the problems. We're just one piece of this. This here, yeah, I, I knew it was going to be a tough job. I knew that. But I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I mean, because, I mean, look at this. So, so yes, I guess, but that's okay. Um, all right. Oh, set, uh, I'll go to the zones. We will post the heat map up uh, by tomorrow so you can see them, okay? I don't want to give you bad information. Um, and, yes, I, I think I probably talk to Tim Longo every other day. We, we talk regularly, communicate regularly, um, and Chief Reeves as well. And um, because, like I said, these issues transcend all three jurisdictions. It just so. seems like the, and I apologize for interrupting. Yeah. It just seems like the university corner is an anomaly for this community. And the resources that are limited, a third of the department right. is empty, should not be allocated to a jurisdiction mm -hmm. or a geographical territory that already has its own police department. Mm -hmm. Understood. It seems like it should go elsewhere. Understood. It seems like mm -hmm. we're appeasing, and I went to UVA, Mm -hmm. But it seems like we're appeasing money and parents mm -hmm. and not people that live in the community. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And I will put those the, the heat maps up, but um, I, I, we work very well together, so I appreciate that. Well, there was a third question. Uh, the third question was you're going to put the heat map up tomorrow. Yeah, that's it. You can offer more clarity on Chief Longo in the corner here. Okay, oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> 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 and the, well, I don't know about that's Lee Longo on the corner. So, yeah, so if you think of it, it's all very close, right? I mean, the corner's right here. Yeah. If something happens on this corner, we'll probably hear it from here, right? So this is all part of that area. So when you talk about, and I, and I'm, I don't get into the, all the nuance of hotspot policing. It's really called micro hotspots, right, where officers go into the area, and they, they're only there for like 15, 20 minutes, go to a different area, go back. So, but anyway, it's, that's kind of at the very micro level. Um, so I, I hope that answers your question that our officers aren't there on the corner all the time. I don't have the officers to be there the whole time, but we work hand in hand with UVA police um, and, and the uh, Alamo County. But Chief, what's problematic is that's me last night at the town hall, Michael Cotches' town hall. Um, I mean, you, you, guys, you guys can't make this stuff up. 17 hours ago, 17 hours ago, the police, in partnership with Dairy Market and its staff, utilized a church, a church that was purchased by Dairy Market and the development firm that owns Dairy Market. The church was historically an African American church. Today it's a wedding venue, a space that can be rented by the hour to host a dream wedding, an expensive wedding. During the weekday hours, 
It's an event space for community members, the proverbial water cooler. Last night, the proverbial water, water cooler was so crowded that a venue that has a capacity of roughly 100 people had 200 people in change. So crowded, the venue was spilling with people out the front door, down the stairs, and onto 10th and Preston. This venue was less than half a mile away from a crime scene where a 20-year-old young man from Gordonsville was murdered in the daytime hours last week. This venue was so overflowing with stakeholders and neighbors and citizens and folks that are in the three policing districts 24-7, 365, because they live there. Elected officials like Dave Norris, in fact, he's running for office, he's not elected yet. Another man running for office, Bellamy Brown, Sally Hudson, the, the state delegate who's running for state senator was there. Tim, all three police chiefs, Al Morrow, UVA, and Charlottesville City were there. Lloyd Snook, Brian Pinkston were there. Jay James, the head of nonprofits, multiple police officers were there, about a dozen Charlottesville police officers. Tito Durrett, who was at one time on the short list to be the police chief in Charlottesville City, was there. In fact, he was taking the minutes for the meeting, literally transcribing the minutes for the meeting. I saw folks from all walks of life speak. We had folks like Jeffrey Fogel speak. Folks like Dr. Bell Dr. Wes Bellamy speak. Will Jones, the head of Prolific Run Club, spoke. Residents white and black in 10th and Page spoke. There were folks that talked about wanting more police in the 10th and Page neighborhood. There were families that said, we never see police in the 10th and Page neighborhoods. And there were folks that spoke last night concerned that the additional police presence in these police districts would further advance the police to prison pipeline. Splintered the audience. Many wanted more police in their neighborhoods, but not all of them. And the distrust for police from folks living in the neighborhood was tangible and palpable. Will Jones offered in an emotional three-minute monologue that was profound, insightful, profanity-laced, passionate. He's the head of the prolific run club. Put the footage on screen, if you could, of all those in attendance. Then go to the map of the active shooter. We'll then ask Alex Erpy to come here on set on a three shot. He just navigated the traffic from this active shooter. You're uh, welcome anytime you'd like. We'll get you here for some reactionary from a stakeholder in this community and Alex Erpy, certainly a, a community leader in many different spaces of people. Oh, thank you. I, if you want to weave in Alex on a one, or on the three shot with three of us and then go back to the map and the B-roll footage. You produce the show how you see fit, Judy. You're doing a hell of a job today. I'd like for folks to see Alex because I want some reaction from him. I believe he just navigated the traffic that was 250. Um, mm -hmm. The show is yours, Alex. Um, where do you want to begin on this? Just the whole thing is stopped and the road is closed at this point. They closed it just as I was, so the, the I got on 250, um, right on the exit before Barrett's Road, backed up the whole way, and then I managed to get off on Barrett's Road when at the same time they're done for, for investigation, so it's just, it's just stopped.
Speaker, just asked if Katrina Colson, who's running for delegate as a replacement for Sally Hudson, he's asking if Colson was there, Katrina Colson, at last night's town hall meeting. She was not. The candidates that I saw there for that seat were Dave Norris and Bellamy Brown. Interestingly, I also saw former mayor Dave Brown there who recently announced that he was dropping out of this delegate race. So Dave Norris there, Bellamy Brown was there. I did not see Katrina Colson, and I was at that meeting from start to finish. Um, comments are coming in fast and furious. Your reaction to this statistic in 2023, the Charlottesville Police Department, the Charlottesville Police Department has responded to one incident of shots fired every day this year. It's you can s sense it. Like even even as someone who you know has followed the news, you know you you know check the news, see what's going on, listen to the radio, watch the show, right for news. You you begin to sense that there's been a lot more violence, particularly gun violence in the community, and particular, which is kind of scary given that it's only two here. So it's. It's it's a bit of a nerve-wracking thing to to be dealing with because this is not exactly what you think of when you think of Charlottesville. The Charlottesville Police Department is expected to host a press conference in the very near future. We will keep you updated on this. I do not believe it's live stream, so that press conference, the details, I can relay live on air to you. I mean, Judah, I want to jump you in here on a three-shot. If you can, if not, we can hold off. I want to get some reaction from you. You're very sensible on this. I think um, on a, most perspectives, frankly, I want to have this conversation. Um, when does the significance of, an, of a police standoff, an active shooter on the lam, a live negotiation mm -hmm. session, the closing of many local schools, private and public, mm -hmm. the closing of many local preschools, the lockdown scenario of Barracks Road Shopping Center, the lockdown scenario of the Dominion Building, the Region 10 Building, multiple road artery, arteries, mm -hmm. major, road major arteries. road arteries, when has this become the most high profile gun and gang, I'm, we're not going to hold off on gang yet, I know it's gun yeah, violence, that I don't think they know. we yeah, don't, they know don't know gang much. or drug, so when has this become the most significant gun violence incident in this community this year, is this it? It, I mean, it, it's a challenge, is that, I'm, I'm, you're hesitant to say that does the only victim we know of is the is the person the who active was shooter. is the active shooter. At this point, it's it's harder to see. I would imagine the families who have lost someone that was killed by a shooter would would find that a probably a, a bigger incident than this. But in terms of you not being able to avoid knowing about this, I mean, if you were on the road today. Or you had a child in school, you, well, you, take it a step you have to wait to the next day to find out that this happened. Take it a step further, and, and I certainly agree that the, sh the shooting incidents that involve murder have significantly more significance for the family mm -hmm. of the murder victim, the family and friends. I, I, I completely understand this. But I would imagine that regional or national media are more apt to cover to an active this. shooter scenario like mm -hmm. we just had less than an hour ago as opposed to um, gang mm -hmm. violence that resulted in a murder in a neighborhood that historically has a lot of violence. Mm -hmm. This has, a, this is in, uh, I mean, this is in 250 hydraulic yep. Whole Foods, uh, right where the old Gold's Gym, Kmart, Red Roof Inn, Angus Road, Barracks Road. I mean, this is the heart of the city mm -hmm. here, fellas. Maps on screen. Judas got the map on screen. Work yourself in on a three shot here. The significance of the geography of where this happened, Alex. Well, but like, like you said, you can't, this is the type of thing that if you're on the road or you're in anywhere in the area, you can't not know, you won't, you won't find out about this tomorrow. You, or have, be checking the news and saying, oh, look, there was a shooting. Like, you're going to know that this happened and that this impacted the entire area around there going as far back as uh, the Ivy edged it on, Baird, on uh, the 250. So there's no way of avoiding knowing about it. Um, Jude, I'm going to weave you in here in a second. Carol Thorpe says, today's incident occurred on the cusp of the Jack Jewett District of Albemarle County. 
that's her district. She's the queen of Jack Jewett, about 1.5 miles from her home. My husband was under lockdown at his job at Northrop Grumman. Wow. Most employees and students in the area were on lockdown. Uh, Police Chief Cotchis expected to host a press conference soon. Janice Boyce Trevilian, people are scared. People are tired. It's getting worse every day. That's a common denominator mm -hmm. across the network in the comment section. Yep. Judah Wickhauer with some reaction on today's show. Lisa Custolo says, for people living in these hotspot neighborhoods who do not want increased police presence, how do they suggest the shootings be addressed? The community policing themselves does not seem to be working. What are they proposing if they are not, if they do not want to utilize the police? Lisa Custolo, multiple people at the town hall meeting yesterday who spoke before and after me proposed letting the community resolve the crime. In fact, one young lady who spoke before me at last night's town hall meeting said police does not solve crime and was passionate and adamant mm -hmm. with that statement, which she reiterated over and over again. There was a significant portion of the over 200 people at the meeting last night who did not want the police to use the hot spots or the police districts. A significant portion of those who were opposed to the hot spots or the police districts were African Americans who lived in those districts. Their fear, the, the police to prison pipeline and systematic racism and policing that comes with hot spotting. In fact, multiple people on in the town hall meeting last night referenced commentary utilized by Mayor Nakia Walker in her Facebook post about the soda zones. I heard the phrase soda zone, which Nakia Walker posted on Facebook, mm -hmm. yeah. was it three days ago. We talked about it yesterday. Multiple people referenced soda zones, a type of policing strategy where the police aggregate their efforts in micro locations. They reference them to being historically racist and systematically a pipeline to prison. You, I believe, are looking up the definition of soda zone, if I know you well enough, which 12 years of working alongside you, I, I know you fairly well. Is that what you're doing right now? I'm looking up soda zone. Okay, yep. what have you found with the definition? I figured you would look that up. Uh, not a whole lot on what I'm looking for. Uh... It stands for stay out of drug areas to find boundaries. Uh, but, um, I, you know, about, about what's been going on today, I feel like, I feel like something is different. Um, you know, usually we... Uh, <clears throat> I think usually we catch the, uh, we catch the, um, the fallout of, of what we've what we've heard of going, going on. And here we have, uh, we're not, we're not finding out about the fallout. We're fine. We were finding out about it as it happened. Yeah. And whether that is, whether that is because the police are onto something and they're starting to catch people, or this was just a, a random event that they, uh, that they happened to, uh, to interrupt. Um, either way, I, I, it, it feels different to me. And, uh, for some reason, that's got me hopeful. Uh, I know that uh, that today's action ended up in someone someone being shot, um, but I, I'm I'm thankful that it that it wasn't uh, you know that it wasn't just some it wasn't an innocent victim. Mm -hmm. uh, they the police stopped the person who had the weapon, and uh, so praise the Lord. There you go. Well said, Judah Wickhauer. Amen Laura, amen, amen. Laura Payne watching the program. She says, Soda Zones, as Judah indicated, it's an acronym for stay out of drug area. She also said, Laura Payne, um, in the comment section of one of the 15 Facebook pages the show airs on, she says, they existed, the Soda Zones, in the city until early 2000 and were put in place at the height of the crack epidemic. She says, patrolling... Um, Controlling, There were patrols on bikes and horseback at the time. I remember when I first started at the University of Virginia, this was in 2000, um, it was common knowledge that the Teth and Page area was an open-air drug market. And it was compartmentalized to this area by police 
giving latitude like you saw in shows like The Wire on HBO, mm -hmm. where Bunny Colvin, the Baltimore Police Department leader, I think he's a lieutenant, um, he created an open-air drug market in the show The Wire, the Baltimore, uh, in Baltimore, and compartmentalized all the drug trade to one area, which allowed um, the remaining area, his territory, to be much safer from a crime standpoint. Mm. Um, Carol Thorpe is saying the Associated Press has picked this story up. Mm, yeah. So the AP is now covering this story. Janice Boyce Trevilian, it's not working for the areas to police themselves. Crime is getting much worse. Thoughts, reaction, perspective, Alex Erpe on all this. It, it's difficult because you, on the one hand, you can, you can definitely understand people's trepidation that after years of fearing, you know, the, the you know, the drug to prison pipeline and so forth, that people are hesitant to have increased police presence in the neighborhood given some historical distrust, right? But at the same time, I can't imagine you want things to continue as they are. And you didn't, the community policing itself, you don't necessarily necess also want vigilantism or anything like that. I'm not sure. I'm curious how that intends to work to police itself, that you, ne you don't necessarily want people just walking around, patrol, random citizens walking around patrolling with more weapons. This is, that's a great point here. Um, great point. Linnell on Twitter, Linnell Duma, she's saying, Cautious, the police chief, also stated that it's not about petty crime in these neighborhoods. He's sending the message that Seville is tough on murder and terror might be necessary. Um, this is something that I asked Cautious that I didn't get a super clear answer on. One of the three police districts is the UVA corner. The UVA corner is also policed by the University Police Department. Why would we splinter the Charlottesville Police Department resources, mm -hmm. which are one third um, under capacity, one third of the department is currently vacant, or, or there's, what's the better ways of framing this? They're a third short of staff right mm -hmm. now, Basically. the police department. Why uh, include the UVA corner into one of those three policing districts, soda zones, hot spots, whatever we're going to call them here, when there's already a police force that patrols that area, the University Police Department? Instead, why are the three police districts not 10th and Page, Fifeville, Downtown Mall, or 10th and Page, Fifeville, mm -hmm. South Downtown, Iggs Park, 6th Street, 1st Street area, right? I feel like what's happening is you have the political pressure of 25,000, 30,000 UVA students and their parents and the money associated with it and why that zone was included in the public and the PR campaign and the town hall campaign and the policing strategy of the department. I don't know. Your that thoughts on that? You disagree? That, that doesn't really sound like a move that Conscious would make if, if it was just to appease uh, UVA parents. Um, I, I think it goes higher than Conscious. <clears throat> I wonder. Higher than Conscious. Okay, I think but, we're talking we're talking Jim Ryan, Lloyd Snook, Michael Rogers, Michael Pickston, that though? type of level. Why though? My because get the last thing you want is for the University of Virginia, and then I'll stop. The last thing you want is for the University of Virginia regionally, nationally, or go globally to be branded as unsafe for students. Because when Charlottesville, Virginia's primary source of economic activity the University of Virginia gets monikered or scarlet lettered or branded regionally, nationally, or globally as potentially unsafe for students, then you have a serious problem on your hands. Certainly a possibility. I mean, let's, let's be honest. It, it may not be fair, but let's put it this way. Random person dead shot in Charlottesville probably doesn't make the national news. UVA student dead shot on the corner. There it is. It's, it's national news. It's, it's not just news. local news. It's, it's, yeah, it's there national. it is right there. It's national news. And, and it doesn't it's mean not it's fair. fair. doesn't mean it's fair. Go down that road. You know, does That's that mean it right there. One life isn't worth more than the other, but that is how the news cycle is going to work. It's, it's, just, it's just a bigger news story. Alex Erpe's all over it. You disagree. I, I agree a thousand percent with what not to say. Erpe not said. to say that Judah may, there, there may be other reasons. I don't know enough about the corner to know. I'm not saying there's not other reasons, but I would imagine that may be one of them. I, I, what are your thoughts on this? And, 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 and you know... Just for conversation purposes here. My thoughts are that uh, if you've got a if you've got uh, if you've got a drug problem in Charlottesville, who's buying it? I th I would think that the uh, 
one of the one of the obvious answers might be might be UVA students, mm. and if uh, if they know that there's regular distribution going on around the corner, then uh, then it would seem logical that if uh, if if uh, Conscious and the Charlottesville police are trying to coordinate uh, taking down you know the center of whatever whatever this is that uh, that coordinating with the corner if that's a regular distribution spot would be necessary. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, if 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 drugs are being dealt um, in Charlottesville to UVA students, the corner would be a vehicle to potentially deal those drugs. There's a number of gathering spots where that kind of activity is done there. That could very well be the case. That could very well be the case. I would think that you, you strategize with Tim Longo and say, Chief Longo, you have your own police force and you have the backing of a university, especially in the shadows and wake of the murder of three students. Why don't you take the UVA corner and then we'll allocate our limited resources elsewhere to the city? a divide and conquer strategy. I think another conversation that needs to be put into the news cycle, and we understand the influence we have here, is the joint force efforts of multiple departments. And maybe time for some kind of elite force, and I understand Jade, the Jefferson area, uh, drug enforcement unit at one time was this elite force. It may be time to reconvene an inter-department effort with the University of Almar County in Charlottesville City. Because what's happening right now ain't working. It's not working right now. And when the Associated Press covers this story, and multiple outlets are saying the Associated Press is covering, covering this, it. this is going to be fodder for editors at various TV, radio, and print outlets to stream the AP wire and determine if they want to add this piece of content or this piece of news into their cycle of information. When it's covered by the Associated Press, it's sent everywhere. It's, it's going to be filtered somewhere. It's filtered everywhere, and then it's left to editors to make the decision of carrying the content in their publications or outlets. JoJo Robertson watching the program. She says this. Jerry, after the shooting on the corner, UVA parents called into council concerned about their kids. I remember that. It sparked a disagreement between Nakia Walker and Heather Hill. She's 100% right. When University of Virginia students are shot or injured by gun violence or it happens in the proximity of University of Virginia um, stomping grounds, you get a level of, of engagement from citizens that is at a significantly greater volume or clip than you do if it happens locally. And she's exactly right, her memory of what It's also happened. not surprising. I mean, parents... Parents care about their kids, and they're not. And for a lot of parents, they're away from their kids. It's going to bring out the parental instinct to make sure that your child is safe. I mean, it's that's not surprising at all. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember I, that time as well, Jojo Robertson, yeah. um, Johnny Ornalis. Welcome to the show, um, Juan Sarmiento, Nora Gaffney, Angie Stevens Boyd. Hello, welcome to the program. Um, thoughts, viewers, and listeners of what's going on here. As you can imagine. The, the comments are coming in fast and furious. This is from um, Dylan's Rule on Twitter. His handle, at Dylan's Rule. JM, you are 100% correct. Let's not forget that the University Police Department was doing some of Charlottesville Police Department patrols last year due to the CPD vacancies. Mm -hmm. It would make no sense for CPD to designate the corner when CPD is so understaffed and UPD could, could patrol the corner itself. That's what I think. Is, is, could it be that CPD is designating it but intends to have UVA police police it? I can offer some perspective on that. Last night after mm -hmm. speaking, I went and shook the hands mm -hmm. of uh, Tito Durrett and a plainclothes officer. He was in a suit, and he shook my hand. He said, thank you for what you said. And then he said, just for the record, the UVA corner is in the city. That's why we're policing oh. it. And, and we do, for the record... Technically, by law, the corner is city, city jurisdiction, because it's not grounds. It's adjacent to grounds. But not grounds itself. But not that grounds actually, itself. That makes a lot of sense. But not grounds itself. Um, Judah, mine's turning here. You're connecting with the viewers and listeners. No, What's just, on the brain here? That makes sense. I mean, I, yeah. 
the corner is uh, the corner is Charlottesville, um, and uh, and also uh, you know if they're uh, like I mentioned before, and and of course that's all speculation, but uh, but perhaps the uh, perhaps the UVA cops are not set up for um, UVA officers, police officers. Yeah, perhaps they're not. Uh, perhaps they don't have the the training or the just the uh, the tactics to to be dealing with uh, with gangs and drugs. I, I don't. I, I don't know. I, that's that's your that's your comment there. That's not mine. Um, okay. I, I do not know the qualifications or skill sets no, of the know. University Police Department. No, do no. I. Um, so I, I I do not know the case. I would expect they would be able to manage, but I certainly don't want to marginalize. Um, where do we go from here? What happens from here? What's your common sense say? My, I mean, given what happened, given last night's right events, right, and the, the tenor of the conversation, my suspicion is that some kind of trust level needs to be built between CPD and the neighborhoods in question, because obviously that trust does not currently exist. Sticking a bunch of new police officers into that area where there is no trust is probably asking for some trouble. So the question is, how do you, they have to find a way to build trust. I'm, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure you necessarily want people walking around trying to police themselves like the Wild West. But at the same time, you have to respect that there's not, there's, there's a low level of trust there, and there may be flat out distrust, right? So you need to rectify that at the same time you're going to, to focus on that as a hot spot. I'm not saying don't send additional officers there, but if you are going to do that, you need to recognize what the situation on the ground is, I think, and, and really work towards building some trust in that community. Do, tough question for the both of you. Tough question for the both of you. When does Conscious start getting held accountable? We're still in the honeymoon what's period. His, yeah, what's his timeline? We're still in the honeymoon period. We're at the approaching the two-month marker. So far, everything Conscious has done has been the right thing. He's done the walk and talks. He's moved into the 10th and Page neighborhood where he's living. Mm-hmm. He, in very public fashion, interacting with folks at the town hall last night, said, you know where I live. You mm-hmm. can knock on my door. Don Gather said to Michael Cotchis, I've had you into my house. They intimated that they were neighbors in, in the neighborhood. Which is going a long way. Which That's is going a long, a long way, way towards building that trust. Walk in the walk, talk yeah. in the talk. Michael Cotchis right here. But when it's all said and done, I think Cotchis, his job is determined by, your job is determined by return on investment for your clients. Our job is determined by the return on investment mm-hmm. we do for our clients. Michael Cotchis' job is return on investment, and his ROI is the safety of the community and crime statistics being down, not up. Mm-hmm. Judah, your thoughts on this? Obviously, honeymoon stage here, but when does the community start really getting critical? Oh, um, I mean, uh, knowing this community, it won't take very long. Um, but, uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm hopeful. Uh, I like, as I've said before, I like what I see in, in, uh, police chief conscious. And, um, I think he's gonna, he, he seems to be fairly transparent in, uh, letting the community know what's going on. So I have a feeling we're going to, we're going to be getting, uh, fairly frequent updates and, uh, and I, I hope that we'll see some, uh, see some progress soon. Um, Janice Boyce Trevelyan, then Alex Erpe on the topic. JBT says he has to be given time for his mm-hmm. plans to start, for any change to be made. Yeah. Um, Matt Daring, who works for the university, makes this comment. The Charlottesville Police Department has a substation on the corner right by White Spot and the, um, and the bridge. So that could be why Charlottesville Police Department is calling the corner as a policing district because they have a substation on mm. the corner. Matt Daring, that's a great point. That is a they're, good point. They're also opening a substation on, on uh, let me get the exact location of where the substation they're opening here. I don't want to quote the wrong street. Matt, you might be able to help me on this. Actually, it was Prospect. They're opening a substation on Prospect. 
is where it is. Hold, check that out, Matt. I know you follow this closely. Where's the substation they're reopening? This came up at last night's meeting. I'm drawing a blank on the road. It already existed, the substation. I believe that substation was off a of Hardy Drive, if memory serves correctly. But viewers and listeners, correct me. Alex Irby, mm -hmm. jump in here, please. No, I, I, I think there's time. And I think people, just in the same way as with a, f a financial advisor, people might look and say, all right, well, you know, the market was down. Therefore, I'm not going to say, oh, my account was down. You must be doing a terrible job. I think people are wise enough to realize there are trends at play here that predates Tachis as police chief. In other words, there are trends going back to last year. This isn't like he became police chief and poof, within ten mo two months, everything started falling apart, right? I think there are trends there, and I think we have to also be able to, in our minds, separate a little. There's going to be, there is systematic crime that he can deal with, and there are random events which cannot be foreseen and cannot be controlled. I mean, you, the UVA shooting last year, right, there's, you can't exactly connect that and say, well, because there was greater gain or drug crime, that caused that, right? So there are, there's two types of events that we, ha that we are looking at sometimes, and I think people understand the separation of them, and I think people understand that there are trends at play, and therefore you need to give time, because he is working against some serious headwinds. Like CPD, there's some headwinds that they're going to have to deal with. And it's not necessarily that they caused them in the last two months, but that they, they predated his arrival, but he still needs to deal with them. Judah Woodcar, something you want to add as we wind down today's program. I do want to get the map back on screen when we can as well. And I got comments coming in on literally every platform. Philip Dow, welcome to the program. J Dub, show is yours. Maps back on screen. Um, I uh, I was just looking through some of the comments, and I really like what uh, something that Lisa Custlow pointed out about uh, an elderly woman who said that she does want increased police presence in the neighborhood and wants personal relationships with the officers known mm -hmm. on, a, on a first name basis. And I, <clears throat> this, I think this is definitely what we need. And I yeah. believe that this is the, um, what would you say, the, uh, the cure, so to speak, for I think this, this fear of, um, of neighborhood profiling because that was a fear that was very present last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, and it's understandable. Very uh, present. And, and we should I apologize for inter interrupting here. You and I in particular, we have not had the historical experiences to truly empathize or comprehend the type of profiling that police have done in the past. Yeah. It's important to emphasize that. Yeah, definitely. And I, uh, even, if I can't, uh, even if I can't fully understand, I... I do understand um, that uh, you know that that feeling of fear, um, having cops roaming your neighborhood and not knowing what they're there for and who they're going to pinpoint next. And I think part of the solution to that is knowing them by name, mm -hmm. because we're a small enough community that uh, you you may not know the names of every single cop on the force, but if you've got uh, if you've got a few that that are regulars in your neighborhood, it would be easy for for people to get to know them, and and I think that's uh, you know when you've got a, a giant city like Los Angeles or New York, uh, cops go in, they don't know anybody, they're just you know they ostensibly want to want to stop crime, and uh, and in a smaller in a smaller community like this, I think uh, it's much easier for for the police and the community members to work together, to get to know each other, to uh, to form a, uh, a beneficial relationship where it's a lot easier to hold accountable people that, uh, that you know, do something that they shouldn't be doing. Um, multiple viewers and listeners have confirmed the new substation that is reopening is in fact on prospect. Mm. That's where the new substation is. The substation is essentially a smaller satellite police station. 
So there will be one on Prospect. There is one on the UVA corner, which Matt Daring has brought up to our attention. Um, we're going to get Alex Erpe in here for about 20 seconds before the close of the show. Kevin Yancey has said 10.2 square miles, divide it three ways between UVA, the city of Charlottesville, and Albemarle County. Each of them should patrol 3.2 square miles. It needs to be a joint force or tri-jurisdictional effort. I was, Kevin, just, I was just thinking that and wondering. I've been if, saying that for a week. Yeah. I've been saying that for a week on this program to reenact Jade, the Jefferson Area Drug Enforcement, or sir, do some kind of joint venture with Albemarle County, Charlottesville City, and UVA police. I've been saying that for at least a week here. Well, as we've said for a long time, what happens in Charlottesville City affects Albemarle County. Oh, so linked, so linked here. Mm -hmm. With our traditional 145 conference call on the horizon, um, anything you want to add here, Alex Erpe? No, just I think, I think Judo was spot on. I think... I think you said it was Lisa Tuslow. I think you said it spot on. When you know people, the people who are there to protect you on a first name basis, you go a long way towards building trust. And that's when you can then increase your presence and really go after the people that, that are causing damage to their own communities. Alex Serpin, CEO of Merchant Financial Services, a, a trusted perspective in this community. Philip Dow says the new police chief is taking. Um, over a complete mess from the past administration, chief and council. It's going to take a long time to get us in the right direction. We'll close on that. Judah Wickhauer, Alex Erpe, Jerry Miller, the I Love Seville show in literally real time today. So long, everybody. Good job, Alex. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah, I drove into it. <laughs>